thank you very much for still watching uh, the number one business channel in East Africa, Smart24 TV. My name is Anthony and I am your host. And this is the point uh, where we look at policies, we look at business sectors uh, that are making something out of the Ugandan economy. And today we are talking the fishing or fisheries or aquaculture business in Uganda and some of the things that actually it has been able to contribute to our economy and the challenges and trying to address some of them. And I'm talking to uh, Dr. Kafero Ivan, an experienced uh, fisheries businessman. Uh, now, Dr. Kafero, we have uh, talked about some of the uh, things that you need to look at. You need to look at the feeds, which are very, almost contributing 70% mm. of the cost of investment. You need to look at um, uh, probably the type of fish links you're looking at, right? Mm. The yeah. quality of those fish links, mm. they should be the right quality. Mm. Now, let's talk about the other uh, challenges that mm. are facing uh, the industry. Mm. Number one, looking at the quality of the water, looking at, uh, for example, the oxygen levels in the water. Recently, mm. we've had reports that, uh, for example, in Lake Victoria, we've had a lot of trash being thrown in there, mm. and this is leading to suffocation of fish. Many industries are dumping mm. uh, their wastes in wetlands. Mm. These are some of the things that affecting the industry mm -hmm. and I want us to discuss uh, them more. Let's start mm -hmm. with the water quality mm -hmm. in fish farming. Mm -hmm. What should the water quality look like okay. when you're starting this business? Uh, thank you again. Um, now, fish uh, water quality, uh, as we categorized farming, uh, we have two types. The farming in open water bodies, that is when you put a cage that is water that you actually have no control over. It's, if it is the lake, that water is for the lake. Yeah. So whatever happens to the water will affect your fish. Uh, on this side of the ponds, you have controlled water. You let it in and you let it out when desired. So the quality challenges now that uh, brings a difference in the quality challenges of the water. With a lake, with a pollution of the water, you may find some places are no longer, uh, some areas of the lake, you can no longer have that business there. Now, like places near wetlands that have the, 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 the wastes from industries. So before this waste is diluted, if your fish is there, your fish would die. Mm. So that calls for uh, like strict restrictions and regulations from the NEMA. If they can't control, if they fail to control these industries, the water quality is going to affect the business in in cages. Yet, as we've said, the cages actually contribute to the biggest quantity of fish that is farmed. Mm. Because for it, you can farm so much in a smaller space. So, NEMA needs, actually before you select a site where you are going to put your cages, NEMA has to be informed. They do the water quality and testing and all those things. Uh, but if you start and any problem to do with water quality comes in, you may not be able to solve it. You cannot shift mm. the lake. You cannot flush the water. So you will find your fish dead. That is for people who are using now the lakes. The open waters. The open waters. Yes, those lakes. who have the cages. Okay. So they are at the mercy of the polluters. So if we can fight on the pollution of these water bodies, we are actually protecting them. The farmers who are there, who are doing the, the, the farming there. Yeah? Mm. So there you may, after you've established your, your cage, you may test the water, but you have limited control over that. Whereas when you come to the ponds, you kind of have a, a considerable percentage of control of this water. You set up your ponds in a given place. If you do it well as recommended, 
you must be able to allow in water and out whenever required. You can stop any water from entering. Mm. But when that water is in that pond, uh, there are tests that are done. The ones you mentioned about the oxygen levels, the algae density, the pH, the, the pH mm. all those are controlled by the practices and management. That's why I was saying mm. this business is uh, is somehow technical. technical. Yes. You need these instruments on the farm. Mm. You need someone who can do this testing. Someone who will know that now this water needs flushing. Someone who will know that now this water is short of algae and then do more fertilization. So this is knowledge that people, the farmers, who don't know who have gone into this, that need to get more and more. Let them be educated more and more to manage the water culture because it is important. Mm. Just as you are in this studio, the air you breathe mm. is actually determining the quality of life. So the fish gets the air it breathes from the water. If anything, that's its environment. If this water is polluted, you are stressing the fish. Mm -hmm. You may actually find it dead. Even putting a lot of feed can kill the fish. I've actually had that concept of stress. Yes. A fish can actually get stressed. Can get stressed. Because mm -hmm. now you see, for example, when you are studying, uh, I think it was biology, when that plants breathe oxygen in the night, Mm. and the carbon dioxide during, during the day. Yes. In the night, that means the plants are competing with the fish for the so oxygen, for the oxygen exactly. that is in the water. That's so, the algae, right? That's the algae. So mm. if you have a lot of algae, mm. the water is too green, that means at night the fish are suffering. That now requires you to have information about how to control the quality of water, to know that now this is excess and then you do something about it. Know the pH. You know, the fish is in this same environment. As it eats, it excretes in this water. They said the fish toilet is its home. Uh -huh, is its exactly. home. Yes. So if you don't flush the water, mm. it gets too dirty and then it stresses the fish. Mm. Which is actually the, 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 the advantage of a cage because for it, the water is too much and it keeps moving. It's very hard for the fish to pollute the water unless the pollution is coming from outside. So these two kinds of fishing, in the open lakes mm. and as well in the ponds, mm. require a, entirely different scientific knowledge. Because uh, yes, to manage. To manage. Yes, the, yeah. the, the pond is more controlled. You may find mm. some to do more intensive. You may actually do aeration. In the ponds. In the ponds. So to pump in more air, air yes. to have more oxygen in the ponds yeah. such that the fish are lively. The more lively it is, the more it feeds. The more it feeds, the more it grows. Mm. So the farmers need to look for this knowledge. Mm. That's why I would actually really recommend if you're going into this pond fish farming, make sure that you have the number of the fisheries officer. Government has employed these people, they are there at the districts, to help out on these challenges. That person, if you see anything unusual, you would call them. But also as a farmer, you have to keep looking for this knowledge. Hmm? All this knowledge I acquired when I entered this business, I didn't, uh, it, this is not my specialty. Yes. It's until I went in, the challenges then look for the knowledge to solve these challenges that you faced. Mm. So, water quality management is very key in the fish farming management. Once you manage the water quality, you can grow your fish. Everything falls in line. Everything falls in line. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, thank you very much for that. But then there's also the issue of, um, you know that the fish always have, like you said, there's stress, they, mm. they get stressed. Mm. And uh, you know, you need to tell what situation they are in at mm. the moment 
you talked about some of the in process i can call them in process checks mm-hmm. <laughs> in the scientific language mm-hmm. uh, the water quality the low the acidity mm-hmm. and alkalinity mm-hmm. and and all these other parameters then how do you tell the stress for example mm-hmm. how do you tell that you know what i think my fish is stressed and i need to do something ah uh, now that requires you to to be exposed to this fish okay. you need to understand the business but one sign uh, when you see your fish is always on top, like gasping for air, for air, that means it's actually not having enough air. Suffocating. Suffocating. Mm-hmm. In most cases, the biggest stress comes in with limited oxygen. That's when the fish really gets stressed too much. So if you, that's one sign that you can see. But also, if you are in ponds. Normally in the morning, if the fish is stressed, you find foam which of, mm. on the water. Yes. That means the fish are actually competing for oxygen with the, with, with, the, with the plants. So when you see that, that's one sign that the fish are stressed. The other sign is you feed the fish, but they are not eating. Normally, loss of appetite. Loss of appetite. Mm. Those are some of the things that you can actually notice. Other cases, you may start f- f- finding dead fish on the pond. Today you find one, tomorrow you find two, the other day you find three. That is already an indication that there is a problem and you need to sort it immediately mm. because the, this issue progresses. As it progresses, the number of fish that die keep on increasing. Mm. So you need to have, if you, um, if you have, are having someone to manage your ponds, you really need to have someone who is knowledgeable, someone who has had experience, someone who has worked under someone who knows mm. to be able to have this business successful. Yeah. So management is actually very, very critical in fish farming. Mm. Yeah. Um, we would like to explore, Dr. Kafero, on some of the opportunities mm. uh, that this sector provides. When we were in the break, you talked about mm. the wastewater, for example, from mm. uh, the ponds. Mm. Uh, that this water, if recycled into our gardens, mm. if, if watered on our plants, mm. it could actually support growth of these plants. Mm. Instead of us using the, the, post, uh, the fertilizers from mm. uh, the stores. Mm. Uh, so what are some of these those you know, opportunities that can be created even for other sectors but also for the fishing sector mm. within this business mm. what can we explore um uh, i told you that the name of our farm is called in Kong, integrated integrated, yes. integrated fish farm mm. when when i was trying to read about fish i found out that fish is a is a an animal that grows in water and puts all its waste in water. But it's an animal also that uh, can feed on plants. So, integrated, what we do, you have poultry. This poultry, the manure from the poultry can be put in ponds in a controlled way that is in sacks and put in ponds now this encourages growth of, of algae. Now when these fish eat, they waste in this water. The, feed, the waste they put is actually more or less like the manure that other birds or other animals put out. But this is dissolved in water. So if you have your garden near your fish pond, you can then use this water to water to irrigate your garden. There you are doing two things. You are giving it water and organic manure. So this integration can actually, that's why with fish, you can do a lot of things in a small space. That's why it's actually very encouraged uh, with the, at, at the family level. You can have a sustained environment. You can grow your poultry, put the, the, the manure in the ponds, then get the water, grow vegetables wow. and food. Wow. 
the, the cycle is really yes, continuous. Yes, the cycle is continuous. Mm. So this can be done even on a larger scale. Yes. Eh? But you see, it is really an interesting business that can be uh, expanded. Can be expanded. There are so many other opportunities that come with fish farming. Mm. Uh, like now, uh, I could talk about the value addition. Mm. 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 This fish, so many people enjoy it in different forms. Some may like the fresh, some may like the fried fish, some may like the smoked fish, some may like the fingerings. Eh? All these are value chains that can be uh, gotten from, the, from this fish. So you can have your fish farm and then you can have several products that come out of this fish farm. Just simply because there is fish. There's so much that you can do out of this business, and this is scalable. Mm. As I, uh, as, as I, if I may stress that mm. it is scalable. You can do it at a smaller scale, mm. and you can do it at a larger scale. Mm. Yes. Which which one is better? Because mm. now I'm looking at uh, the that integrated mode, and mm. then there's there's this other capture fish method, mm. which currently is more famous right mm. and uh, because of the other issues we have talked about capital and so on mm. it's still currently not as uh, it's not it's not celebrated the, the mm. fish farming is not yet really to that level mm. uh, but in your own opinion uh, which one do you think is better mm. in as regards returns uh, in as regards returns i would say uh, the scale mm. if it is a smaller scale the capture fisheries may be uh, may, may 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 get more returns because the investment is really uh, the, the the trans the, the fuel for the boats to go and mm. capture fish. If they good get a good catch, good for them. But it is not that scalable. But with this aquaculture, it is scalable. Mm. You can have so many tons of fish in a short time that someone in capture fisheries can never do it. Mm. That's why countries that understood this, especially in Asia, when you look at Asia, China, Malaysia, eh, those countries, uh, the Vietnamese, they've really invested in fish farming. And when you look at the data from World Bank about aquaculture, they are the ones that are on top. They produce millions of tons of fish mm. simply because they adopted or they, 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 they embraced aquaculture. You can't rely on capture fisheries and say that you can scale it. The fish out there, there are so much so many things that feed on them. So you, you can't reach, you can't exceed a certain number. But with aquaculture, this can be exploited, can be scalable, just as I told you, you can produce over a million tons of fish. Imagine Egypt is getting water off river Nile, but they are producing over 1 million tons. We have the source of the Nile, we have the lake, we have a very big portion mm. of, the, of the Nile here. We have Lake Choga, we have Lake Victoria, we have Edward, we have George. Those so many lakes, we have so many crater lakes in the west. All those are areas where we can do aquaculture. If the population could adopt this as a business, as government works on the challenges, working with private sector, lower the cost of feed, make availability of fingerings, quality fingerings, we can really produce feed, fish that can feed almost the entire world. We can, mm -hmm. I, I believe we can reach the level mm -hmm. of China. Yes. Being a global producer. Being a global producer. Mm. So there is, I would really push for the aquaculture. Mm. We cannot depend mm. on, on uh, capture fisheries. Mm. And we say that we can grow the, 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 fish, exactly. the fish business. Mm. That fish will make a, a big contribution mm. to our economy. Yeah. Unless we go to that uh, aquaculture uh, sector. There, there is a there is a, a, a very famous um, or there was a conversation that was actually going around a few years ago mm. about the nuni. Uh, there was an argument that 
Chinese come here, they know they take the nuni and then they make mm. uh, various things, including mm. uh, yes, mm. collagen and so many other things. And then they sell back to us some mm. of these mm. products, meaning there are those other non food mm. opportunities or even food, but not directly mm. direct food, not fresh fish mm. that we're not exploiting. Mm. And some of these I've seen even when you're studying fish, it has a lot of oil. And we can actually get oil for Vaseline, mm. for using in our mm. uh, different other processes. Mm. What are some of these uh, other opportunities outside that you have realized that actually when you get fish, mm. instead of just getting the food, you can actually get this and this and that? Mm. There are a number of them. Uh, you've, mentioned, you've mentioned a few. You've mentioned the, 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 that's the swim bladder, mm. or the one we call a noni. Mm. Uh, that is used to make so many other products. Uh, the, the one I am aware of is the, 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 the sutures, yes. collagen sutures, mm. the ones that they used to stitch you when, you when they've operated on you or when you've got an injury. And they don't need to be removed. And the, the absorbable sutures. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, there is also this, the fish scales. Oh, really? Those are used to make gelatin. Okay. You see these capsules? They, they, they tell the capsules for for tablets, yes. you know? they, they, for, for drugs. Tablets is a different form, but the capsules. Mm. That shell is gelatin. So the scales are actually also used to make gelatin. The fish bones are also very rich in gelatin. Oh. So all these are opportunities mm. that are there with fish. Mm. And... Uh, the, the fish oil you've mentioned, if you can go and try to buy some amount of fish oil, that's when you will know that fish is gold. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. It's really expensive. Mm. And the, the, there's so many other products that can be uh, gotten from fish. Yeah? It is really a delicacy that on top, but on top of it being a delicacy, there is so much that can be gotten if we can do value addition. My advice to this is uh, like, how can we exploit this? Um, mm. we, we still have a challenge of the technology, of the knowledge, mm? but there is someone out there who has known how to do these things. But I trust Ugandans, we are good at learning, quick learning and, uh, and duplicate. Mm. If we can find a way of attracting people who have had this knowledge, partnering with them, and they show us how to do it, I am very sure the Chinese will never get the, the collagen again. Mm. If we get a business person to understand how this is done, they will have to do it. They will do it. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, our ob the obstacle is in knowing what needs to be done with these products. Mm. That's why we have been exporting so many materials. That is, if we, we apart from the fish, so many materials, have, raw materials, have been exported and then we get products back that sometimes we don't even know they are from the raw materials that we exported. It is with this uh, coming of, of some of the, the multinationals, the industrial people who have come here that have actually opened our eyes that, oh, these this things we've been true. exporting and they bring back in this form. Mm -hmm. And then you see government is now trying to protect the, the raw materials before they take them. Mm -hmm. So even with our fish business, if we can attract these people who have the knowledge about the value chain of fish mm -hmm. to come here, if we can show them that we can produce the fish we can consume the fish and they come here, we can consume the products. They can come here, invest, partner with uh, the, 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 the people who are in the market or in the field. Mm -hmm. Who knows? A few years to come, you may find that now Ugandans are the ones doing it alone mm -hmm. without any help. Yeah. Yes. Wow, thank you so much. Um, we want to get into the laws mm -hmm. of this sector. And um, of course, there, there have been complaints in the people in the business mm. about the strict laws. Mm -hmm. And reading on the 4th of May 2022, mm. uh, Parliament passed uh, the Fisheries and Aquaculture Bill of 2021. Mm. And that 
a bill, among other things, prescribed uh, that a 40 million shillings uh, will be paid mm -hmm. or a jail sentence will actually be served uh, for about two years mm -hmm. if anyone was found selling fish without a valid fish trade license. Mm -hmm. And um, the farmers really came out and uh, they, they, they refuted this and said, why, why do you have to give us a license? And government was putting itself in a position whereby mm. they are saying that they want to preserve our fish and they don't want us to what 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 we used to call overfishing in primary mm. where you overfish uh, for example a certain mm. species mm. and i think we had a certain point i don't know if you actually noticed mm. when we had shortage mm. of certain species mm. of fish because they had been overfished mm. so what do you think about some of these laws are they helping? Should farmers embrace them? Should we rebel against them? Mm. Or are they actually helping the sector? Um, <clears throat> when, I con when I look at exactly that uh, point that you've, you've mentioned about mm. the fish uh, quantities going down, I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier when we were starting, the population is growing. The pressures on the capture fisheries is growing. The trends of aquaculture is taking off, but not yet that fast. So, that situation, I believe, is the one that caused for government to see that they regulate this business. I wouldn't say that these are bad laws. I believe it's in good faith, mm -hmm. though there are some things that may need to be uh, looked into. But it is really necessary, if you want a, a sector to prosper, you really need to regulate it. You need to have uh, role, rules and guidelines of how it should be conducted. Trust me, if they leave anyone to do however they want, mm -hmm. we may lose out as a country. So I, 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 I actually believe it's good to have the rules but then, let them be, uh, let the laws be in a way that you are not actually uh, just scaring away people mm. from the business, but encouraging. Yes, you're not frustrating them. You're not frustrating them, mm. but let, them, let the people be encouraged to do, let, let the laws be guiding, but not reprehensive, not like waiting for you to... Like people may just fear mm. go into, but about that, um, I think it is more on the capture fisheries. Mm. As far as the the, 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 the the culture is concerned, since you have control of all, over those, all these things, you can harvest your fish at any size. Mm. Whereas that's not the case with the with the with the capture fisheries. You can harvest fish as, as as small as 100 grams, so long as you have the customers. And But even this, you need proof that you farmed this fish. One of the avenues that are there, every district has a district fisheries office. If you farmed your fish and you now believe you've reached the market size, you get in touch with the district, you pay some little amount they give you a fish movement permit. Then you can access the market with that fish. No one will stop you so long as you have, at least that's what happens to us. When, when we feel that now this fish we should dispose of, we should sell off, just call the district fisheries office. They come, they witness as you fish, you weigh the tonnage that you've gotten out, you pay some small fee like 50,000, you load the fish and take to the market. So long as you have that, anywhere you reach a checkpoint, you show them that, that's like the, 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 the proof that you farmed the fish. Mm -hmm. You are not actually getting young fish from the lake before mm -hmm. it reproduces. Mm -hmm. So actually mm -hmm. when you're doing the fish farming, mm -hmm. it's not illegal for you to sell Young fish. fish, young fish. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mm. I didn't know that one as well. It is very okay when you are doing the farming yourself because you may reach a certain point. Mm. You need quick money. That's one bit about fish. Mm. Any size you can sell. 
Yeah. When you need money, you, you can sell. sell. Unlike maybe poultry, it has to reach a, a certain stage. Mm. But with fish, you can sell. You've seen them on yeah. the on, on the roadside. Actually, thought all those were illegal, so I, 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 was even, <laughs> I was even afraid to buy some of them. Like really, <laughs> not not all the time. Though there are some who actually misuse that mm. and get from the wild capturers and they do that. But in most cases, tilapia, okay. it's okay. Mm. It's your fish. You farmed it. You've controlled everything, and you know where you are going to get more young fish to farm again. Mm. So you can. You can sell your fish mm. at any size, yeah. but wild or capture fisheries, you can't do that. Mm. That's why they would require you to have a license. Mm. That license would require you to have the right size of nets, yeah. and you will be obliged mm. to follow the guidelines. Mm. How do you fish? All those things. Yeah. So. I believe the laws are good, mm -hmm. though I haven't yet read that uh, that law in depth. Mm -hmm. But I, I I I want to believe that it was in good faith to see that the fish or the aquaculture sector is boosted yeah. in the country. Mm -hmm. Doctor Dr. as we almost come to the end, mm -hmm. we have uh, people watching out there, mm -hmm. especially young people, and I've seen here on social media that they are quite enthusiastic, and mm -hmm. many of them are commenting. Mm -hmm and they want to start a farm mm. fishing business mm. and uh, you've talked about some of the challenges you've talked about some of the things that are important the mm. feeds the type of fish mm -hmm. now if i'm out there and i want to start mm. a, a farm fishing business mm. give me some of the tips what are some of the highlights that mm. i must look at very critically mm. as i'm beginning oh thank you <clears throat> now if you really want to go into fish, mm. there are a few things that you need to know first. Mm. Yeah. One, the life of fish depends on water. So access to water. And this should be throughout the year. Okay. Yeah? Yes. So the cage, I would say, for starters... Is, is there water that is not acceptable uh, mm. for fish farming? If water is exposed to pollutants, let me say for example, I'm using my pond. I'm not using my, getting water from the lake, and I have a tap. Mm. I'm using national water. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? It's not okay. That water is treated. Okay. That water has chlorine in it. The effect on of that water is not good on the on, on, on the fish. So we need natural water, and that is water that is flowing all the time. One of the signs that this area would be good for fish, at least you have to find some live organisms, the like area. the wild fish, mm. the frogs in that water. Mm. Then, as I've mentioned, you have to be sure that that location has water throughout mm -hmm. the season, or throughout the year. If not throughout the year, you have to know the seasons when it will have water such that you will only farm during that season. When the water is out, you pause. Mm -hmm. But for you to maximize the, the, the returns on investment, you need a place that has water throughout the year. Can I get from the borehole? From the borehole, mm -hmm. yes, Because you can. From underground. But now, look at this. Mm -hmm. The cost of getting that water mm -hmm. from the borehole, that mm -hmm. means you will have to incur costs of electricity. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. First drilling, then the electricity to pump it out because it's not flowing naturally. Yeah. Okay? Then, after knowing that, I would really recommend find someone technical. Someone who can set up for you a farm. Someone who can like study the area, know that when you construct a pond here, water will flow in freely mm. and leave the pond freely. You don't want to incur costs of pumping water mm. into the pond. Yeah. You want it to flow naturally. You want it to flow naturally. Mm. And all that comes from the design of the ponds or of the, of the site. So someone should be able to help you design ponds that will freely get water in and freely leave the water. 
you've saved already a lot. If you go for a site that needs pumping, that is already an extra cost that is eating into your profits yes. that you would rather save. If you're using fuel pumps, it would require you to buy fuel, yeah. repair pumps, mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. or buy pumps. Yeah. If it needs electricity, the same costs mm -hmm. will have to be in incurred. So if you're going into this, avoid this from the start. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Don't assume that it will be a small cost. Mm -hmm. Just know it is going to make your life hard. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, make sure that you are acquainted with the management knowledge. If you are not well conversant with the management of the fish, make sure that you get someone who knows. Mm. If let's say you are setting up a, a business, like in my case, uh, I'm not the one who does the management. You get someone who has studied that field. There are actually people who have studied uh, the courses to do with fisheries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People have from certificates to diplomas to actually bachelors. Mm -hmm. Someone specifically has studied to grow fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can find someone. You employ them. Employ them. To manage the farm. And to manage the farm. Mm -hmm. On top of that, then make sure that you have access to the quality inputs that is the feed and the fingering mm. okay. one way mm. of doing this yeah. i would recommend before you go into this business make sure that you at least contacted two or three farmers who have been in this business mm. they would actually give you a lot of information that you would that would enable you avoid the many mistakes that so many farmers have done yeah. without uh, just because they didn't inquire as they went into this business. Mm. But what I can say, it is really, really an easy venture. Compared to other agriculture businesses, mm. for example, if you buy your fish, the babies, put them in the pond, the remaining thing is buying feeds. Even these remote farmers, even if you go there once a week, mm. you just need to, this, far, the, 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 this uh, labor, uh, the, the person the, who is managing, to give you evidence that the fish is in. If it means sampling every time you go there to make sure that the fish is in the ponds, do that. But it is easy to monitor. That's what I can say. Mm. And someone will not easily mm. sell off the fish mm. because of the complexity in the marketing. Someone will have to fast fish, then find a suitable means of transporting it. Yeah. it it's not like coffee whereby someone will just pluck and then put in a sack and run away. Yeah. Yeah? It's not that easy. So it is easy to manage. So if I may repeat, want to enter into the business, one, make sure you have access to water throughout the year. And this water should be freely moving, moving yeah. into and out of the ponds. Mm. And, and, and I forgot to ask you about the time for changing mm. uh, the water. When, when, do you, when do you know that this, this water has to be changed? That is, that's what we were talking about, the management, mm. uh, that someone has to first uh, have the knowledge Mm. No, okay. when the fish is stressed, I need to change the water. Ah, okay. Okay? When the water, when the fish is behaving this and this way, water needs to be handled this way. Mm. So it's not a, a predetermined uh, no, thing. That every after a month. That every after a month, mm. it really depends on the, 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 the environment. The environment. Okay. Like for example, if the water is warm enough, fish may feed more. And in feeding more, they excrete more. And they, once they excrete more, the water gets dirty faster. Mm -hmm. And yet in the wet season, the rain keeps on adding water. Mm -hmm. So all those factors come in management as you manage your business.
because mm. you manage the, the, the farm. So, I was trying to go through access, access to water, to water yep. access to knowledge, mm. access to quality inputs, yeah. and then uh, what employing was employing? Employing, if you are not doing it, mm. employ someone who understands the business. Yes. Not everyone can manage fish. Mm. Now, talking about the threats, mm. what are some of those things that threaten mm. the livelihood or, or the, the wellness of the fish in the pond? For example, mm. uh, am, am I supposed to use a concrete wall when I'm constructing the pond? Mm. Am I supposed to just put, I've seen people put poly bags mm. around and then they just put the water in there. Mm. What are some of those other external factors? Yes. Now, the reason why I, I, I told you that you need someone, mm -hmm. you need to consult from someone who is technical, mm -hmm. these are all determined by what you need is water in one place. Okay. That is your goal. Yeah. So the nature of the soils will determine which pond mm -hmm. you're setting up. Okay. If you are an area that has a mixture of clay and sand, you don't need to construct using uh, concrete. concrete. You can just actually put the water in You there. just dig the pond mm. with the help of people who are experienced or who have the knowledge in digging these ponds. After you have the, your pond, then you let the water in, let it settle over a period of time. If that water can stay there without being drained, then you're sure that pond can hold water. Okay. But if you are in a soil that is sandy, that will allow water to move, mm. soil that can't hold water, then you may be forced yeah. to either do the dam liners, those polythene, yes. we call them dam, dam liners. liners. Okay. You put them there, then you allow in the water, so the water won't be able to, to go through. So it is not that you just wake up and decide that I'm going to have these concrete ponds. Whenever the pond goes from just construction and you are adding more materials, you're making the cost of the pond more expensive. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is really important to have someone who has the knowledge before you start up this. Yeah. All those factors will be guided. Mm -hmm. You will be guided on how to go about all those things. Does fish get sick? Does it need treatment? Uh, <laughs> the, for, for the years we've been in, uh, in this business, we've never actually gotten any incidence of mm. our fish getting sick. Wow. So long as you manage the quality of water, mm. you can never have challenges. Mm. Or the challenges of sickness are really minimal. But that doesn't mean that they never get sick. They sometimes, they may sometimes do. We've studied, we've uh, studied about those things. We've looked for knowledge, and we are, we have the knowledge in case it happens. Mm -hmm. But that is a very rare case, and that by the time it happens, just know you have a very big problem in the management. But when it happens, yeah, there is a there is a few things that you do. Yeah. Make sure that the fish gets well. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much, mm. uh, Dr. Cafero, for those very, very wonderful insights. There's a lot of uh, very many people on social media really appreciating and uh, saying that the information was really, really, really helpful. Now, as we conclude, uh, maybe your last words uh, to government, the people out there, mm. about fish farming generally. Mm. Yes. Uh, as I conclude, first of all, I would like to thank you really so much. Uh, Smart 24, uh, that you first of all you thought about fish farming or aquaculture as an important sector, and also thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I actually, when I got the call, mm -hmm. I asked who, and then I got to know that it was the chairman of our uh, union, yes. uh, Simon Muyanga Lutaya. Yes. Uh, the, the, the message I would like to pass out, especially if you have your money yeah. and you are looking for an agricultural venture that you would go in, mm. I would recommend fish. Mm. Why? The returns on investment is high. 
Uh, that's, that's very hard for a businessman usually to say. <laughs> the returns of investments yeah. are high. Yes. Yeah? I would give you some calculations here, mm. but I, I, I gave you some uh, yeah. when we are starting about the productivity. Yeah. A given space of an area. Imagine doing a, a business that can give you millions in, from just an acre. Mm. An acre can take about four pounds. Mm. Mm? Mm. Each of those pawns can give you about a turn to two turns eh? every season. You can do twice mm -hmm. a year. Yeah. Eh? Mm -hmm. When you really factor in, when you factor this in, if you have all factors constant, mm -hmm. you would love fish. Yeah. So I would encourage those who have the money, those who don't have the money, try out fish farming. Mm -hmm. But follow those steps that I have told you. Avoid mistakes as much as possible. Mm -hmm. It is really a good venture. Mm -hmm. It is satisfying. Eh? Yeah. Now, to government, first I thank them, I, I thank government for the efforts they have come up with to mm -hmm. see that people participate. There's really been a lot of promotion eh, about fish farming. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, like so many projects have come up to, to see that people are equipped with the knowledge and the information that is required. Mm -hmm. They've tried to put up the systems, they put, tried to make the environment uh, friendly, yeah. fish farming, the laws that you've seen. Government doesn't just come up and make laws yeah. in, for a sector that it has no interest for. So I commend the government for the interest. But now, this challenge that we have, especially the feeds, we really need the intervention of government. Mm. If it means attracting foreign uh, direct investment to come and invest in this, let that be done. But if it means supporting the local people who have shown interest, mm. I would really ask that they look into that. Mm. We need the cost of feed to be lowered. For God's sake, the ingredients, 90% mm. is available locally. Yeah. The things of soya, maize, uh, cotton, cotton seed cake. Yeah? The things are available here. All we need is partnership with people who have the technology mm. to see that we can produce this feed locally here. And it will have a trickle effect. The people who grow the soya, the people who grow the maize, the we'll people get will get market yeah. for these products. Sure. And at the end of the day, we shall have a more valuable product, that mm. is fish. Mm. Before we know it, we shall have so much to get from aquaculture if this solution, if this is a solution is found for this. Yeah. We really need feed to be solved. That would be my cry mm. to government. Mm. If there is anything that I would cry to them, please help us solve the issue of the cost of feed. Yes. It is pushing some of us who are enjoying this business out of the business. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. That is it, ladies and gentlemen, mm. uh, from Dr. Kafero Ivan and myself. We've been talking the fish, uh, fisheries business and aquaculture in Uganda. And of course, we've talked widely on the different opportunities that can be exploited in this sector. Thank you very much for those of you on social media. Uh, thank you, Dora. I'm seeing uh, Eklaus and a couple of others who are actually following uh, the show on Twitter and on YouTube. And of course, I'll catch you next time. Uh, same place, same time. Smart24 TV, we do drive your business. Stay tuned. More programs yet to come your way. And see you next time. Bye for now.